Xenon has a really protect the blabber comp already. This is a lot of focus on blabber. I actually, uh, I'll tell you guys that like we 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 had, like talked about this matchup a shit ton. Um, this this specific matchup, Olaf versus Kindred, and the idea of it is like Kindred just on Olaf uh, as the game gets longer and longer because Kindred is super mobile. Kindred also, if she does manage to get caught, can just ulti. But then like Gragas and Gal, you're actually really good against Kindred because they have big AOE ults. You can knock them out. You can Gal ulti into the Kindred ulti to like knock everyone up right as it fades. You could kind of say the same thing over here. Oriana and Lulu can play inside Kindred ulti really well. They can just time their CC. So it's kind of like everyone has this like loaded gun inside Kindred ults. I'd still put the advantage, uh, especially early game on 100 Thieves and then maybe late game they see nines better. But like, uh, anyways, back to my point of like we tried this matchup a, a bunch. Um, as it turns out, if you're a really good Olaf player, you're just going to outpace Kindred the entire game. So it's really hard for Kindred to get to the point where she's like outscaling and 1v9ing when she's constantly behind items. Olaf's team is pressuring your team on dives. Olaf's team is is getting Herald and getting Drag whenever he wants. And you don't actually have any fighting power on Kindred until you have items. But Olaf does barely needs anything, man. He just needs one item. He can probably do Drag at like level 4 or 5 easily. Like I actually give this, I actually give this draft advantage over to 100 Thieves. Cause this is too scaling, man. This is this is some pussy shit. Kite back, survive, scale, Aphelios, Lulu. Oh my god, like the synergy is so amazing. Go late game, boys. Just kite back with with Kindred ulti. Just annoy the fuck out of these guys. But like the game doesn't really work that way, man. I feel I feel like it just does not. It just does not actually happen that way. There's always going to be an early fight. It's not like C9 is just going to be okay with giving everything up. There's always going to be an early fight. And if that early fight swings for hundred thieves. I'm really worried for C9. What can you do, man? You you farm for late? Pro play, or maybe LCS can be because the, the level of play can be low in LCS sometimes. Pro play is not farm for late, okay? Not anymore. That's not how the game works anymore. In scrims, you want the standard fan so you can have like practice in your matchups, quote unquote. That's like generally the excuse people use is, you know, you know, I don't want to blow his flash. Or I don't want to do anything crazy. I just want to know how the matchup goes. And then you get into this habit of like not actually doing anything level one, but like Every single time at LCS goes international, the game is sometimes won and lost. Like, not sometimes. Very often won and lost off of uh, level one. And, like, we had this problem at Worlds, actually, where, like, Chinese teams and Korean teams would just completely blow the game open at level one just by doing basic stuff. Invading, split mapping, blowing someone's flash. It is a shame that, like, there are not more level ones in LCS because you can just get free advantages. Like there's almost no advantage in fanning if you have the stronger level one. You can sweep wards and get XP. I know Soren used to get super triggered because their mid laner would always get a swept ward at level one. And he's like, why can't we do that? And it's like, oh, cause our champions are worse at level one. So if we fight them over the ward, we might get wiped. And it's okay, okay, so the stronger team gets to like sweep board level one, and also the stronger team gets their mid laner to hit level two on the first wave, which actually influences the matchup a ton, apparently. Like, depending on the matchup, obviously, right? I really like that FBI is playing uh, MF, actually. I think the MF matchup versus Aphelios is very... It's just useful to have MF against Aphelios, in my opinion. Pricks no mana. Yo, here comes the dive on top for 100 Thieves. So Fudge, uh, he needs to leave, or he's going to get blabber killed if he doesn't leave. Uh, Fudge is dead. Fudge decided to stay on turret. Maybe Perks will, maybe Perks will actually, uh, TP, but I don't think it's good. I don't think Perks or TP is just gonna die, too. Oh, no. Oh. Oh! No way. Demonte choked that. Demonte choked that, dude. I guess it was good, it was a good TP, but, like, Demonte's E went the wrong direction. Wow. I don't think Olaf should have started tanking, and, and Demonte missed his E on a, on a rooted or taunted target there. It actually was a good TP by Perks, obviously. You don't know how the fight's going to go. And he ended up shielding him to help him live, so it's good. It was really, uh, really close. I think I like the attempt by 100 Thieves, and I like the counter by C9. That Blabber, like, trailed that gank and ended up showing up, like, perfectly on time. That was, like, really smart from both teams. And the only misplay is just mechanics, mechanically. Okay, flash, one shot perks, goodbye. So disrespectful for him to play like that. He had a ward as well. Wait, guys, that was insane. Did you see? Perks has a ward in right line bush and he still dies. This guy's just getting bullied, man. Flashy ult one shot, flashy ult one shot. Oh my god, Fudge, man, you just have to ult early, dude. When when someday presses W, you should know what he's going for, 
right? That was that was well played by Someday. I would like to have seen Fudge realize, okay, he's pressing W in my face. He has flash ult up. I have to ult early. There's no way you're going to react. Actually crazy that Perks dies here with the ward on the right side, dude. Dude, getting solo dove like this. Fudge should be able to react here. Ult! Oh, blah. Oh, he... So he should just ult there to make Someday, like, take a little bit more tower damage. Like I said here, he's pressing W. You have to just ult. Just ult. Oh, well played, I guess, by Someday. Top is really behind. Lulu can just do Lulu things, though, even though she's really behind. So Close is looking for a way to use Herald. He's, like, positioning bot. He should just do the ping pong between mid and bot. After you full clear with Herald, you sit between the two lanes and you bounce between the waves. So like here, he looked bot on that wave. It didn't work. Someday's totally fine. He's never going to die here, man. Oh, he is going to die. Oh my god. Wow. That was amazing. Blabber fucking flashed into him for the knockup. Okay, I, I changed my mind, guys. He's totally dead. You know, one thing that is like I always find is like super smart by some bot lanes is like this. Look, look at this. Uh, I'll show you. Zven actually taught like most LCS AD carries how to do this. This is like so something that I think must be so basic for you AD carries, but like the map is split here, okay? Zven, think from Zven and Vulcan's perspective. Zven, one of the smartest people to play around waves in LCS. He's getting fucked here, okay? He's getting split maps on with Herald. A lot of AD carries would just sit here and soak XP. Definitely the wrong move. He just instantly bases and gets one base out of the enemy to carry. So at this point, FBI, he's going to get a shit ton of gold and FBI wants to spend it. And Zven is already off his base. He doesn't just like go AFK, right? He's always like doing something. And so here, he has tempo. I already knew it was going to happen. He has tempo, even though he got fucked here. On the, on the reverse, when, when FBI bases with that shit ton of gold, Zven and Vulcan have already got off reset, so they have like one timing to do something. That could be drag, that could be like pushing out the wave and getting wards, but they are actually ahead even though they got split mapped on. It's really smart, and it's something that Sven and Vulcan are really good at doing, which is like just taking it up the ass with like just perfect base timings, perfect wave management. They can always make something happen. It's really good by them. When I played against Sven and Mithy, they were so good at doing these kind of things, and they made the game really hard for us to win because like it felt like we would send so many resources their way, but they would still be impactful. Couldn't they have just done drag anyways? No, because if Sven stays there and catches the wave, he doesn't pressure the enemy to carry to base. Because like he already got his base off, FBI feels pressured to get his off as well. Yeah, I would like to see uh, 100 Thieves definitely ban Kindred actually, because Blabber is really good at it. And uh, oh, he just sold his tier two boots. Oh, he bought it again. Okay, interesting. I like that some days are going damage because being a meatball is not that useful against a full shield comp. You call this a ball comp because it's just a five-man stack ARAM. No one can split. There's no flanking involved. There's just five men sit in one area. Not like tightly stacked so you get wamboed, but like loosely stacked in a ball. And what is really good against that is having like big AoE burst. They're not going to stack in one spot to get five-man Gragas ulti, but there's a higher chance you're going to get a fat Gragas ulti against a comp like this. So that's why it's really good to go full damage. Big AoE damage wombo combo kind of beats this comp. It's like when you when you admit, I dude, I have been on so many teams. Here's the here's the logic. I don't want to ban Kindred because I don't think the champion is good. If it was good, I would play it. And then everyone on the team is like, well, like maybe it's not actually that good, but he's really good at it. And he's like, you guys, you guys think Kindred is OP? Like, I could totally shit on his Kindred. Like that ha that happens so much. Ooh. Fudge is face checking and taking an absolute ton of damage and ruined his team's positioning. Now they get flanked in one shot. Dude, I swear to god, I would rather have a cannon minion on my team than Fudge. At least the cannon minion will push lane. That was disturbing stuff, man. He literally walks up to the enemy team 1v5, ruins his team's positioning, takes the lantern to do absolutely nothing except for survive, and then his team gets flanked by Galio. Amazing stuff. I mean, you're fucking Lulu, bro. Just buff up Kindred, that's your job. Back in 2016. Yeah, exactly, right? Fudge walks up to put that pink there, and his team just gets yeah. Like I said, the ball comp stays as a loose ball, but if one person like kind of breaks the formation, the whole team gets fucked because their whole the whole purpose of the comp that C9's running is that they peel for each other, right? The whole purpose is that the enemy team goes in and whoever is not CC'd is getting peeled for so that the Thresh Lantern, Fudge's Lulu ulti was really important to disengage like Galio's flank. But be because like he had to use both those instantly and like two or three people were like preoccupied with that, then the other two people just get caught on the right. So you have to you have to like play this ball comp really well and you have to disengage the Wombo from 100 Thieves. Because if they get like a multiple like man taunt like that and it's just a perfect CC chain, it looks like, oh wow, why didn't we have frontline guys? We need a tank. But you can 
could totally win with no front line if you just play the formation really well. Yeah, like, I guess my Lucian in 2016, I played it every single game and no one else was playing it. And so, like, I imagine in the draft discussions, people are saying, like, well, if Lucian is so OP, why don't we just ban it? Or sorry, if Lucian is so OP, why don't we just play it? And then the AD carries on these teams, you know, they're saying like, oh, I don't think Lucian is that good, guys. Like, I could totally beat it. Like, it's like there's a reason I don't play it. The reason I don't play it is like X, Y, and Z. It's so fucking bad against this. It's no, it like scales really bad. I'm gonna outscale him. You kind of like lull your team into this like weird false sense of security where like they think that like, oh, it's just his pocket pick, but it's not actually that good. Just swallow your pride and realize that this player has played so many games of this champion that it doesn't matter if it's not actually that good. All that matters is that you're taking the enemy team's like strength strength and practice away yeah i've always really like disliked that part about like draft meetings which is like arguing about like banning comfort picks because like you don't always ban comfort picks but there are certain comfort picks that i think you should totally take away seems like blabber's kindred he's been playing well on it every game and it seems like c9 is like drafting around it as well so you're taking away like a potential team comp of theirs so yeah bjergsen zillion man why are people not banning that every single game it's not because like they think bjergsen is bad at zillion they they like legitimately have have like i don't even know they've like logic themselves into this idea that it's not worth banning because it's not that good. That is like another good example for sure. I mean, Hunter Thieves could be trolling here. I don't really like this. Oh, good engage, good flank butt on perks. He got 100 zeroed again without being able to use flash. Self made Eve. We just forgot to ban it, guys. Like our coach forgot to ban Lucian and they would only play Eve with Lucian. I definitely wanted to ban Evelyn. <laughs> Maybe he legitimately forgot to ban the champion. Whatever. Shit happens. Oh my god, dude. They're just finding engage after engage after engage. 100 Thieves can just run at C9 at this point. It's just, it all snowballed off of like a few early mistakes. Like it all snowballed off of that. Like I think, okay you guys, here's what I think. Fudge should play a bruiser frontline champ like Gragas. Okay, like if anything, just put him on Gragas and have him hold his own in lane because Fudge needs to just be a meatball for his four good teammates. Sven just tanked that shit, dude. Sven is just tanking that shit, dude. Wow. Oh, good. Oh, it was like, oh, fucking Perkovic. That was a lot of damage, actually. This is a game that is going to be decided in like three minutes by the soul. Oh, wow. They're actually doing it without their, without their AD carry alive. They're just doing it with just Kindred and shields. Actually, it's going to work. I think they get it before Olaf can get here. Oh, Demonte taunt everyone, so they can't do damage. It's a 50-50. I give closer the advantage here. Oh, closer! Holy sh! Blabber dies without ulting too. I can't tell if he has it, but it looks like he has it. Olaf has has the the massive advantage in that smite fight right there. It was really good by Demonte to just like run in and taunt people off, so closer could get melee. Because if they just kept doing damage to Baron for like two more, like one more second, closer would not be like in range to smite. F oh wow, Blabber didn't have smite. What? Isn't it so troll for them to go in like this? Wow, who he? <laughs> oh, and someday bought a fucking Zanyas, man. Goddamn legend. I love that they didn't all go in at once, dude. I love that they all didn't all go in at once. Look at the ending right there. Look. I actually think that like the play here is amazing. Okay, look. So Demonte goes first. They have like multiple rounds of go. And then now finally who he goes. They don't all go in and get baited by stopwatch at the same time. It's like peel their defensives first, like playing around stopwatch. That's exactly what I like wanted to see. They they know that the enemy team has like CDs, so it's like Demonte says, I'll go in first, get their CDs. He goes. Right? They they, they like fake disengage and then who he goes. It's just really good. It's really good communication, it's really good play. Because, like, you, if you all go at the same time and you're all getting kited at the same time, that's so bad. How did these kind of poggers show Baron? Uh, sure. Let's see it. So, Demonte goes in, stops them from hitting for a second. Fudge ults himself at full HP. Not ideal. I think you should save that for Blabber. And then now, Blabber has smite. Closer does not have smite. Blabber smites it and it instantly dies to Closer right afterwards. Wow. That is so sad. I'll tell you guys though, honestly, that it doesn't matter who gets that Baron because they're going to get wiped here regardless. It doesn't matter if Blabber takes the Baron. I mean, they're not going to lose. They're not going to lose off this like push right here with Baron, but like it's still so bad for C9 if they all die there and only two people have it.
the outcome is like almost the same just that they don't lose at that moment they're probably going to lose off of the next drag so it sucks to be able to make i like i like labra nudir i think he's his olaf is permaban you cannot give blabber olaf and udir plays pretty similar to olaf this like sort of super zooming tanky fast clearing front line why do they keep picking italy uh i don't really like it that much i i feel like Redacted in Italy is just one of those combos that every top jungle wants to play. Why is Udyr meta? The game is so high paced and the game is so high damage that you can play Udyr as this perma fast learning jungle and because he has like a lot of timings to do drag, do herald, go for go for ganks, go for dives, he ends up just outpacing the entire game and he's unkillable doing a ton of damage. If he gets on someone, he just click stuns them and sets up his team. He actually does good damage, very tanky, and his scaling could be better, but it's not like as bad as you guys think. Udyr is not useless late game. He's just not as good as other junglers like Nidalee. So actually, I think Udyr makes a lot of sense. I told you guys, man, if any team is going to abuse Seraphine bottom, it's going to be C9. They were the most aids at abusing Senna TK when it was meta last year. Senna Wukong as well. And if any team is going to play like off meta bot lane, it's going to be C9 first. Very, very is it Graves time, top? No way, dude. I estimate about five minutes before Fudge gets 100 zero dove by 100 Thieves. I do not have any faith in Fudge to not die to this. It's not even that I hate Fudge. It's like he is playing an 80 carry. Yes, he has like armor. Okay, he has a dash. It doesn't matter, guys. He, he gets flash stunned under his turret. He dies 100% of the time. I, I really don't like when when people play stuff like this and their comp is not really about them to carry you're just adding volatility like is the comp about graves popping off and and winning side lane and doing all these things no obviously not the comp is about fucking udir and yone being like super sped super healed super shielded and and supported by fucking seraphine and Tarek. so i just think it would have been great if they just had something more stable top lane you also have very small magic damage uh yeah actually that's true as well Fudd should have picked Malphite. Uh, Malphite isn't the best champion against theirs, but I think it would have been fine, yeah. Even that, I would have liked a little bit more than Graves. Kai'Sa Alley, one of the best bot lanes in the entire game at going all in. Um, and then C9's bot lane needs to just play as defensively as they can and not die to Alley's level 3. Because if Alley gets that combo, you already know it's going to be sad times. Although I will say that Tarek is, is really strong as well, really fighting. Seraphine carry is really bad. I don't agree. I think Seraphine is just a broken champion. Especially in competitive, it's so much utility and AD carries aren't even really that relevant in most of the games, man. They're just there to press R, they're just there to farm and be late game scaling or they're just there to like follow up. So I, I really like the Seraphine actually both. It's gonna eventually become one of those things that just takes over the meta in LCS. That's what I predict. Oh, FBI is gonna have to cleanse. FBI is gonna have to cleanse. Oh, who he's just gonna die? Who he's just gonna die? Flash? Nope, just dead. Goodbye, sir. That is a lot of CC, man. That is a lot of CC. So easy to gank for these lanes too. Nothing for nothing for a hundred thieves to do on top side. Fudge just randomly flashed. Did they show that on cam? I don't think they did. Oh, Demonte is dead here. Demonte is dead. Flash by Blabber. Stun. He's actually dead. He's actually dead. Udir is just fucking taking over, guys. Realistically speaking, it's really turbo aids to play against Seraphine bot lane because you're just getting outscaled and there's nothing you can do about it. Wow, closer miss on a stun target, dude. He actually, Fudge actually would have died if that did, if that did not miss. That is tragic. Here, they're going for the dive. Oh, what do you know, AD carry, stun. Oh, he missed the spear! Run, 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 Demonte, run, Demonte, run! Oh, they're fine. Wow, okay. Good stuff by C9 to cover that dive, man. Fudge is like the only one who can be targeted by, by like any sort of gank pressure. Because C9's bot lane is just going to absorb every gank. They're never going to die anymore. Stun. Spear. Dead. Finally. So after that, I think Hunter Thief should totally get drag here. Just just take it. Just take it. Just take it. It doesn't feel good for the jungler to be doing this right now. Because he's not farming. But like this is so important for Hunter Thieves. Because if it goes late game and and Zven and Vulcan have just gone 0, zero, zero by that point. If it gets like 20, 15, 20 minutes. They are so much more useful than Kai's Alistar, man. You guys have no idea how broken this is going to be. That's what I would like for him to play something more... Oh, no way this is going to work. No way this is going to work. 100 Thieves wins this so hard. that Wow. No way this is going to work, guys. 
Oh, Perix is dead. Oh, no, he's not. No, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. Oh. Oh. I think I think C9 wins this. I think C9 wins this. Oh, never mind. Fudge is a f***ing potato. I forgot. They could still win, though. Damn. Woo! That was a lot of notes. Did you see how much damage? <laughs> you auto. They're still f***ing aping out 4v5 here. If the fight lasts long enough, who he's going to flank? Root doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. You can't aim for someday. You have to wait for him to come close. Here we go. Smite fight. C9 wins. They're going to grab it and run before... Hopefully they run before who he gets here. Otherwise, 100 Thieves might actually wipe this fight. Oh, who he's here. Double combo. My god, they just chased so far. Oh, Blabbered sidesteps. Still dies. Ooh. That could have been clean by them if they just didn't overchase. They just needed to not keep going because Huhi was putting a timer on that play. Still good though. Still good for C9. They got Herald. They only lost one. I don't like to see Fudge uh, Graves at 50 CS at 11 minutes. That is uh, an OPGG review in the making. You hate to see it. Honestly, the farm all around this game is actually really low. Seraphine does not need to farm a lot. She just needs to never die. You know, Sven is actually doing really well. If he's farming evenly with FBI in this matchup after getting a little bit of early help, that's a huge win for him. Because, watch, well, he's going to base right now get Moonstone. Oh my god, the game just got so much harder for it. 100 Thieves win rate just went down like 5%, okay? Their their chance to win the game just went down 5%. Then when, when he gets Staff of Flowing Water, it's another 5%. I really didn't like the 100 Thieves engage right there where they just like instantly went on Udyr, because like Udyr's not going to die. You really want the fight to start on someone else, if you can. They weren't even close. He's at 70% HP. Then Prex goes for this. I don't think he saw that Nidalee was close, and he didn't think about Ryze being able to port on him like that. So, yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a tough one. Prex just dies without really doing anything, actually. He doesn't hit a good ulti either before. What is going on here? Why are they showing the recalls? Wait, what? What was the point of that replay? Am I... What? They just showed Alistar hitting wards? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Zven's dead here. Zven's dead. He has flash. Doesn't matter. He's dead. Dead, 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 dead. Oh, good charm. Good charm. Can they kill? FBI's tanking for some reason. 1 HP. Prex can clean this up. He has no ulti. Oh, he can't clean this up, actually. Don't go, Perks. Don't go, Perks. It's not going to work, bro. It's not going to work, bro. You're actually going to... Oh, if he gets hit by that spear, that's so hard for him. Jesus. Yeah, Sven actually dead. FBI was tanking that that whole time. Did you see that? He was actually 1 HP after the, the dive. It was a good ulti by him, too. Perks is dead. It doesn't matter what he does here. He is just going to die to some daddy. He's going to go back. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, no. They're just getting picked off, dude. They're just getting picked off. One thing that really sucks as well is, somebody pointed out earlier, the damage spread is so bad for C9, right? Because the enemy team, all they have to do is buy armor, which no one seems to have done except for someday. But the point is that all they have to do is buy armor, and they probably won't take much damage. Because it's not like Seraphine's going to kill them. It's not like Blabber's going to kill them with Phoenix Stance. Okay, Blabber has Turbo Chem Tank now. He's going to be a fucking catch monster wait is, is yone is half magic oh my god i am actually such an idiot guys i actually did not realize that so actually if yone is half magic then i am trolling and their their damage spread is totally fine here what i would have liked to see happen here is that vulcan just leaves sparks to die yeah just leave perks to die because there's no way you're gonna have enough damage to kill someday at this point someday is god okay someday is not even close to dying so yeah vulcan could have just pieced out of that a bit earlier and not had a blow flash it's a quarter magic, okay. I see. I don't know how I forgot that Yone was like a mixed damage champion. In that case, their, their damage is not too bad. Um, it's not as pure physical as I thought. One thing I like to see about 100 Thieves is that they're actually growing their lead, right? They're not just sitting back and okay with farming. The players who are ahead, so in this case, who is ahead? Okay, it's it's literally just top jungle. But they have been a part of every fight. I mean, Nidalee's a part of five kills. Her team only has five kills. Renekton's part of four kills. The guy is, obviously he's communicating and he's coordinating with his team about his moves. And they're actually making stuff happen every single time they do have a move. They're not like thinking selfishly. They, they, they are thinking like big picture. Because if they don't if they don't make anything happen, if they don't make pressure with Renekton Italy early, their enemy team is just going to get the scale for free. So I really like everything that I saw from when someday flash stunned Graves on mid and they finally hit that spear after like three attempts. And they turned that into a drag, and now they have the second drag, and the next one's coming up right now. Like, they have actually played this entire sequence, like, super well. Someday in Closer, yeah, they're, they're really taking over the game. 
I, I just I just don't know when C9 is going to be able to come back. It might be on Staff of Flowing Water. It might be right now. I think they're going to be sweating really hard if they give this third drag. It's it's a scary game. Like You have to make a decision. Are you going to fight the third or the fourth? They could also just decide to say, fuck it. We're not going to fight. No damage. Ba Ooh, not bad. Yo, Demonte, one HP. Demonte, no flash. Zanya's debate really solid. Oh, the, the R from Pricks was not good. He was needed to wait one more second to hit Demonte with it. There's a missed time on the Zanya's. Now Demonte gets to recall and TP back. Re Demonte, recall. Good. Okay, so that's three ults down. Tarek, Seraphine, and Yone all no ultis. Graves randomly ulted. I didn't actually see how that happened. So Hunter Thief should feel really good. Now Demonte TP's back with full HP. Oh, he's going to instantly get collapsed on. Oh my god, phase rush is ridiculous. They're going to give this drag, guys. Yo, f*** Demonte. Just let him die. Just let Demonte die and take the drag. Take the drag. Take the drag. That's so much better than whatever the f*** C9 wanted to do there, which was to play for a pick. I would have liked to see them like make that decision even faster. You know, just say, okay, like they're chasing. Just I'm going to take drag and push bot. That's so much better. They get a tower and drag if they just make a faster call. So It's okay, though. I mean, it's still good for them. Okay, now the game's on a timer. At 25 minutes, C9 wins a fight or loses the game. So what should you do if you're C9? Everything that you do is about getting as much gold and XP as possible so you're in the best condition for that fight. That's the only thing that matters, okay? Whatever you have to do, man. Like, people should be calculating, okay, like, if I have if I have perfect farm, then I have, like, 400 GPM, and then will I have enough time to recall from my item before this drag? Do I need to get kills? And then if you're 100 Thieves, the game is very chill for you. All you have to do, play defensive. At this point, you don't need to take any risks. If the gold lead is still at this point, like 2.5k, 3k, around there, by the time of the next dragon, you're in pretty good shape for the fight anyways. C9 is the one that's like definitely communicating that they need to make something happen before this fourth dragon. And on Hunter Thief's side, they're just saying like, just don't die. You know, the game's already won. And Hunter Thieves is even growing their gold lead right here because the enemy team's air aiming. So actually, C9 is probably calling for a potential Baron here. They're going to... Try to force it. They didn't sweep out the right wards. There's actually two wards behind. They're going to see it. And if C9 starts bearing, oh, they started it. And they know that they started too. Oh, man. They really got to be more careful with these wards. Okay, so C9, they're really pressured. They're just going to go for the 50-50 fight on, on Baron. I really don't like this. They need to get off. I think they need to get off. Whoever made this call, it was a fine call. But, like, when the enemy team reacts, just back off. Oh, man. They're just going to get sandwiched right here, man. I really don't like it. And they're taking Baron this whole time. I, I think C9's position is so bad. Who he's gonna flash combo? Nope. He's just gonna make time. Really good, actually. He trades ulti for Terek ulti. That's really good for C for 100 Thieves, not C9. So Terek ulti is a three minute cooldown, and that's not gonna be up for drag. But Alistar ulti is. Oh! They caught him. They caught him. Okay. So that's something. They got some gold, they got some XP. One thing that C9 has a good advantage with is no one on 100 Thieves has actually bought any healing reduction yet. If you treat this next dragon as like the Nexus, 100 Thieves should really buy as much healing reduction as they possibly can cuz nothing else matters, man. You're never going to get you're not going to get to your third core item before the game is over. So everyone should probably pitch in as as much as they can, you know, two people, get some healing reduction would be really nice. Also, who he is still not even finished with his first item yet, so that would be really good for him if he could get it. Prix is TPing in here. Uh, they're just gonna get gunned down. They're gonna get fucking run down. Oh, never mind. They're not. Demonte's pushing the side, guys. Demonte's just hard chilling bot lane. I don't like that TP. I, I really don't like that TP. That was... Oh my god, that was not good. That was not good. They're gonna give this drag now and go for Baron trade. Wow. I did not like that TP by Demonte. At all. That TP just gave drag. 100 Thieves lost the win condition for another 5 minutes. What is... Someday is so strong. What? Someday just slapped that guy. Yeah. The, the, oh, he stole it? Wow. Closer. Yeah, guys. I, I don't like what 100 Thieves just did. I think that was the best chance right there. I really think it was there. that was the best chance. Another five, another four minutes, and C9 might actually scale up. Yeah, it's gonna be another snooze fest, guys. Get your pillows out. It's resident sleeper for another three minutes. I don't think anything is gonna happen. And, and, and if Hunter Thieves overextends into a bunch of shields, they're just gonna get blown up and die. 
No. Bad engage by 100 thieves. Bad engage by 100 thieves. You gotta leave Uhi to die now. He's just fucking dead. I think they're outscaled, actually, guys. It's it's been too long. They needed it. They needed to take that flip fight on the last drag. Maybe C9 meant to pick Gragas and accidentally <laughs> picked Grave. That's funny. I, I don't think so, but maybe. Who he has flash, so he can make a really big play. I think the play is really just to to knock either Tarek or Seraphine, the support champions, into your team so they get one shot and can't be spamming shields over and over again. So who he has to find that angle somehow. You know, Demonte's actually kind of overextending here. I'm, I'm really worried for him. He's, he actually might just die. He's he he is just playing with fire, man. Wow. He is playing with fire, dude. Okay, just just a chunk. Good. Just a little test. The, the chunk doesn't do anything for 100 Thieves. It's 20 seconds. This is the soul that matters so much. They are happy that Perex has no ulti. Actually, I give the advantage to 100 Thieves. Perex has no ulti. You gotta do... Oh. I... I do, oh! Wow, they just don't take damage. They just don't take damage, man. Disgusting, disgusting champions. Okay, someday actually goes in here. Fudge dies instantly without using anything. Oh my god, Fudge. Oh my god, Fudge. They fucking misclicked, guys. It's G-R-A-G, not G-R-A-V. Whoever misclicked in champ select really needs to get the type racer going. Oh my god, that is... Wow. Two games in a row. They lose. Because Someday is just taking over the game. Look, guys. I also think that, like, what, what Perks was trying to do before what, before Drag, where he was trying to go for that pick, I understand it. I get it. I still don't like it, man. I, I give him a pass because it's Perks, right? But if they kill him here at 48 seconds on, on Drag, is the death timer long enough? where he won't be there at 48 seconds. So I'm, I'm going to go to the end of the game where they actually kill... Let's just say they killed Perks, okay? Level 16. Or like, who did they kill? They killed Fudge. He's level 14. Let me see the Fudge's death timer. Oh yeah, they get it. It's it's like 40-something seconds. Yeah, he would make it. Or like, he, he wouldn't make it. He would not be there. So it was actually a good idea. He has TP, but yeah, he, he would still be dead. You need 5 seconds to channel TP. He's not going to make it there for the fight. Who he played that fight for? He, he did really well, yeah. Uh, my god, man. My god.